You have your palette set up. Now what? All right, are you ready for your first ever 3D application? Let's get started. Now, you may or may not have all the products that I'm using here, but you will use at least a handful of the products that I'm using today. So I'm gonna show you with two brushes. I'm gonna show you with our setting spray and our perfector sponge and then my palette. Again, not all of these steps are going to apply to you, so feel free to skip over the steps that do not apply to you and your palette. I'm gonna start with this right here. This is our setting spray that I actually use as a primer, and I use a damp perfector sponge to apply. All I'm going to do is spray that setting spray on my perfector and just put all over my face. I like to use this as a primer and then again as a setting spray. It keeps my makeup in place all day long. You may have your own primer that you like to use. 3D Foundation is a water-based makeup. Your primer needs to be water-based as well. If you're used to using a silicone-based primer, it will not work with this product. It will make it slip and slide just a little bit. All right, now I'm ready to get started. In my palette here, I have a main foundation color and an accent. I have a contour, a bronzer, a lip and cheek, and an illuminator. If you are using one brush, you will use the same brush the entire application. If you have more than one brush, I will show you where I like to switch and bring in my second brush. So I'm gonna start with this right here. This is the detail brush. This is the one I like to use. I'm gonna dip it in my main color. I don't swipe it in the product, I stamp. And then I stamp the product on my face. I am going to apply the main shade first and I apply that in the area. If I had a beard and a mustache, so right here. Now, at any point, you can apply this product all over your face if you need more coverage. However, if you are someone that just wants the minimal coverage and you don't have a lot of skin integrity things, you're gonna leave some spots blank with no highlight on it. So after the beard, then I place this product under my eyes. I definitely wanna make sure that I'm stamping underneath the eyes because this is where we have a lot of our fine lines and wrinkles and texture. If you swipe your products on, it's going to pronounce those, those places even more versus if you stamp, it will hide them just a touch. So now I did a T across my forehead and down the center of my nose, and that is my main highlight shade. If you are someone that has a second highlight in your palette or your accent shade, this is where you will apply. There's a couple different techniques when using your accent shade. Now, if you are someone who has a nice, bag under your eye, we don't want to highlight that entire area because it's going to make it look bigger and brighter. We want to take a small end of a brush or even your finger and we're gonna apply that highlight just around the area of the bag. So you're gonna place it all around the bag. If you are someone that just wants to brighten, you're going to place a little dot on the inside of the eye and a little dot on the outside of the eye. This will give that lifted appearance. Also, you're gonna to wanna to place it in the center of your forehead, underneath the nose, and middle of the chin. Same thing to blend. I just stamp to blend my products, and then I will come back in at the end with my perfector sponge to go especially under those eyes to make sure there's no creasing. Now we're moving on to the contour right here. This is the fun part because without this, you're looking pretty washed out and a little bit flat. Partially because this shade right here is about a half a shade lighter than your skin tone. It's meant to color correct and it's meant to brighten. That's why we bring in a darker color that is several shades darker than your skin tone to bring back the shape and dimension. Now remember, these are cream products. This color looks intimidating, but I promise you, you can blend it away. So make sure you give it your all and try it out. So when you apply your contour, 
With the highlights, I like to stamp because it's a softer product. But with the contour, I like to swipe my brush through to make sure that I'm getting enough product on my brush. Now, with the forehead, you're gonna keep that color close to the hairline, okay? But then when you look at your cheeks, you are going to find the most prominent part on your face. A couple tidbits to help you find that is start with the top part of your ear and work your way forward. The most prominent part of your face is going to be right there. Traditionally, we always say make a fish face and that will help you, but that brings your contour just a little bit lower and I like mine just a touch higher to give that more lifted appearance. So when applying your cheek contour, we're going to start up at our ear and find the most prominent part. And that's where we're going to stamp. Just like that. Now I stop my contour somewhere between the outer corner of my eye and my pupil. I never let my contour go in these smile lines. So I just stamp right along that cheekbone right there. And you guys, it can be messy. It can be haphazard. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so now I have two cheekbones contoured. Now, if you want to get extra fancy, if you are someone that has a more full face or you feel like your face is a little bit more full, you're gonna take your contour on a sharper angle from the ear toward the mouth. So more of a sharp angle. If you're someone that feels that your face is a little bit more thin or it's more elongated and you don't want to have any slimming appearance, take that contour from the ear more towards your nose and it's going to be more of a horizontal versus more of a vertical, okay? Now let's blend. To blend, this is where I like to switch to the blush bronzer brush. If you only have one brush, you'll use the same technique as this. So I start at my forehead and I like to draw little circles toward my forehead, pulling upward. I don't drag the contour color down. Little circles and all I'm doing is I'm softening up that dark line. I'm not taking it away. Same thing with the cheek. So little circles, I'm pushing up toward my temple I'm not dragging down and I'm not blending that line away. I'm just softening it up a bit. So let's do this one. Little circles, soften it up, pull upward, and that's it. Maybe someone that chooses to contour along the jawline or along the nose, those are a little bit more personal preference and individual. So we can talk about those techniques individually if you have questions. Next, I like to tap into my bronzer color. So for this, I use the larger end of the blush bronzer brush. Again, if you have only one brush, you can still do this. So I like to tap in and I put my bronzer on the high points of my face. So the middle of the forehead, above the cheekbone and then across my chin and across my nose. Similar to the contour, a little bit higher, only in the middle, chin and nose. All right, for your lip and cheek color, there's several places that you can apply your blush. I'll show you two. For me personally, I find the center of my cheek and then I put my dots behind, that's gonna give me a little bit more of a lifted appearance. If you're someone that wants your cheeks to look a little bit more full or draw attention to your cheeks, then you're going to place your blush right on the apples of your cheeks. Same thing as we've been doing, we're just stamping and doing circles to blend this color in. Same thing, stamp and circles to blend. And that's it, you guys. That's how you can apply your cream blush. Last step is your illuminator. I apply this with my finger and I take and apply it right under the eye, right here. 
I do apply it on my Cupid's bow and down the center of my nose. This is gonna give you just a little glow and that hydrated appearance. This is where you may differ. If you have a perfecter, I come in and do one final blend. I take the little point under the eyes to make sure there's no creasing and I do one final blend with my perfecter. If you are someone that does not have the perfecter, take your ring finger and pat under your eyes just to make sure that everything is blended. And then you can take your brush, whichever it may be. If you have this one, I use the big end. If you only have a smaller one, you can use that as well. But I like to do just one final blend to make sure I'm good to go.